Hi everyone. This week I painted some French panties in watercolour and I want to share with you my painting process and why I made some of the decisions that I made. I've had a little break because I've been sick with COVID. I've only just got my voice back this week and I'm starting to feel a lot better. Thank you for all of your kind messages. It's nice to know that you were thinking of me. In this video, I'll share with you my thought processes that came with this French Japani painting. And I want to give you a look at the background that I painted as well. I get a lot of questions about how to paint backgrounds. So hopefully I'll be able to answer some of them with this video. Before I painted this painting, I did two studies first because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. This is the first study. I didn't make any major changes to the reference photo other than to try to focus the attention around the flowers. The painting took me ages to finish and I was a bit shaky because of the medication that I was on for COVID. And as a result, those leaves weren't much fun to paint. They took forever and I wasn't that happy with them when I'd finished. Because I didn't have a lot of fun with the leaves, I thought it might be a good idea to zoom in on the flowers and reduce the amount of leaves that I needed to paint. I opened my reference photo in Photoshop. I made a file the size of my watercolour paper and I dragged the reference photo onto the file. Then I enlarged it and I zoomed in on those flowers. Then I took that reference photo and I painted this study. I was happier with this one, but again, because I was a bit shaky when I was painting, I thought it'd be easier for me to paint larger. So I cut a full sheet of watercolor paper in half and I painted this painting. So a quick tip is to don't always think that you've got to include everything that you see on your reference photo. Sometimes you can zoom in and focus just on your subject. You can also try cropping the flowers for a more contemporary composition. I painted the frangipanis on Fabriano Artistico cold press watercolour paper using Windsor and Newton watercolour paints. With this painting, the first thing I did was paint all the grey areas and all the shadows on the petals. For that, I mixed my favourite grey using French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. So here I'm mixing French Ultramarine with Burnt Sienna and I also mix a bit of water with it because I don't want it to be too dark on those white flowers. And I'll use it to paint on that shadow that's on that petal. I'm on dry paper here. Because this shadow has got hard edges, I can paint on the dry paper. If it had a soft edge running along the front of it, I'd need to paint it on wet paper. It's only a small shadow, I can paint it fairly quickly, so I'm not worried about the paint drying. And all I'm doing is painting in that shape that I see there. This petal down here has got a cast shadow on it with hard edges, but this one I'm wetting with water. I'm doing that because it's summertime here and the paint dries fairly quickly. So the water on the paper will help me eliminate any hard edges forming in the wash that I'm painting on. Here I've also kept the grey away from the area where the yellow markings are. I've got nothing on my brush now, I'm using it to soften away that paint edge. I think if I put the grey underneath the yellow it would discolour it too much. This petal right at the top I've wet with water. I've got the grey mixture there as well. 
I've put the water on this one because the shadow or the grey areas have got soft paint edges and I don't want a hard paint line to form along the bottom here where my brush is now. Okay, so I've got all the grey areas painted in now with the mixture of French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. After I did that, I decided to paint in all the little rolled over edges of each of the flowers. Here I've got a little rolled over edge. I'm painting Windsor Lemon on the bottom section where I see lemon on the reference photo. And then I pick up the grey paint. Down here where the grey meets the yellow, I use my damp brush to soften away the edges. Some of the rolled over edges are a bit wider and they might also have shadows that have soft paint edges. So on those edges, I wet the paper first before I put the paint on. And I also make sure I leave white paper showing where I see it's whitest or lightest on the reference photo. And then I decided to start painting in all the yellow areas on the flowers. To do that, I wet them with water first. I didn't want any hard paint edges on the yellow areas. Not at this stage anyway. So when I wet the paper, I wet a larger area than where I'll be putting the paint and I'll keep the paint away from the edges of the water, which will keep my paint edges soft. This is Windsor Lemon that I've got on my brush. I try as much as I can to use a large brush when I'm painting the petals. This is a number eight Da Vinci Maestro round brush. I put a light coverage of yellow and then as I build the flowers up, I'll put more yellow on to brighten it. And I worked my way over all of the petals, painting the main sections where I see the yellow. Once that first layer of yellow dried, I decided to brighten them a little bit with a bit more pigment. And I also needed to add some darker areas that I could see on the reference photo. For those darker areas, I decided to mix yellow or Windsor Lemon, that's the colour I was using, with its complementary. So I chose some violet. This is Windsor Violet. Just a little bit, I don't need a lot. I want it to remain yellow, but I want it to be a dirty yellow. And I used that colour where I saw it was a bit darker on the reference photo. So here I'm painting over wet Windsor Lemon. I increased the Windsor Lemon colour on this one as well. And here I've got the mixture of the two colours again. I'm deepening the colour at the base. This one here is underneath all the other petals, so I thought I'd put a wash of that colour over the top. It's the two colours mixed together. Here I'm painting on a cast shadow that's on the yellow part of the flower. I'm still using that mixture of Windsor Violet and Windsor Lemon. This shadow has got a hard edge on the left hand side so I didn't bother wetting the paper first. There's another shadow just here I can see. So that's just glazed over the top on the dry paper. For the inner sections of each flower I used some transparent orange. This is what my painting looked like once I got to this stage. I painted in the unopened buds and stems and then I turned my attention to the background. I was able to paint the background in sections 
because the flowers broke up the negative space into sections or smaller shapes. Here I'm wetting one section of the background with some water. I paint the water carefully up against the edge of the flowers because I don't want to get any background colour on them. I wanted to use green on the background, but instead of getting out a pre-mixed green, I used the colours that I've already been using on the painting. This is Windsor Lemon and French Ultramarine. I used the reference photo as a guide only. Here I've left off a lot of those buds that you can see. So I'm looking at the background behind the buds. I can see a sort of a light green glow there. And then I got some of the darker green that I mixed with more of the blue in it. And I painted that carefully against the edge of the flowers. I want to paint on the wet paper again to make sure that my paint edges remain soft. I want the background to fade away. I don't want it to come forward like the flowers. So I want to try and keep as many hard edges away from that area as I can. So the paper is nice and wet and the paint is nice and wet and I'm using a big brush so that I can get it on there fairly quickly. I don't want to fuss too much with the background because I know when I fuss you can see that I fussed so it's better if I get it on there as quickly as I can and just accept what it gives me. I do end up coming back and layering a bit more colour over this because when it dries I look at it and I can see that it's not dark enough. Here I can paint in another little section of the background. Over on this left hand side of the painting I could see some leaf stems in the background. So I wet the paper. This is a mixture of permanent rose with a bit of burnt sienna in it. I'm painting that on there to indicate those stems that are there. There's another one up here. I let the paint drift with the water on the paper. And then I get the green that I mixed from French Ultramarine and Windsor Lemon. I vary the colour by mixing a bit more of yellow or blue into it. So if I want it a bit lighter or greener, I'll mix more yellow. If I want it darker, I'll put more of the blue in it. Once I've got a basic leaf shape there, then I can paint in the areas around the leaf. I'm still using the blue and yellow mixed together, but this time I've got a bit more blue in it. I paint it carefully up against the edge of the flowers because I don't want to get the paint on them. Although if I do get a little bit of paint on them, I can let them dry and tidy them up with my eradicator brushes. I'll show you that a bit later on. So the water on the paper there is keeping all those paint edges soft and hopefully that will make the background look like it's further away than the flowers. Once I got that section painted in I came back with a bit more of the permanent rose burnt sienna mixture topped that area up. Then I wet the next section of background and I did the same thing. I saw a sort of a pinky orangey stem and then I'm painting the areas around it now, varying the green mixture as I go. I went all the way around the background like that on the wet paper and then I looked at it and I could see that my background wasn't dark enough. There wasn't enough contrast between the flowers and the background. To show you what I mean, I imported a photo of my painting at that stage into Photoshop and also a copy of my reference photo. 
I turned the reference photo black and white so that I could see the tonal values more easily. And I turned the photo of my painting into black and white so that I could compare them. And then I dragged the photo of my painting down onto the reference photo just to see the difference. And I could see that my values were way off, that I needed to increase the background colour in order to make those flowers really pop. So then I got serious and I got my little palette out that's got wells in it and I put some French ultramarine and some Windsor lemon in it, more of the blue, and I mixed the two colours together to make a nice dark puddle of paint that I thought I'd use to deepen some of those colours on the background. So those two colours gave me a beautiful dark, deep, teal green colour that I thought would look lovely. I made sure the background was completely dry. I dried it with the hairdryer and then I started to re-wet each little section of background with some water. And then I used that deep teal green colour to start to darken the areas closest to the flowers. So I wasn't going to put this all over the background, just around the edges of the flowers, I thought, at this point. I was hoping that that would be enough. And again, I had to be careful not to get the paint on the flowers. Anywhere where it looked a bit wishy-washy to me, I added this colour. Always on the wet paper though. And I only worked on one section of the background at a time. And after I did that, this is what it looked like. I was happier with it, but I still wasn't completely satisfied. So that's when I decided to re-wet each section again. And this time I'm using Payne's Grey. This is Windsor & Newton Payne's Grey. It's a sort of a blue-grey. It's quite a pretty colour. I knew I wasn't going to put this everywhere, I had to use it sparingly, but I wanted to focus some more contrast around the edges of the flowers, and I thought that this would do it. So I re-wet each section again with water, and then I painted that Payne's Grey right in hard up against the flowers. I let it drift out a little bit, and then I softened the paint edge if I needed to. So here I'll take the paint out of my brush, smooth away that edge a bit more. After I did this, I stood back and looked at it and I think I was finally satisfied that there was enough contrast. I got a bit of permanent rose out and I increased the colour in the centre of the flowers and I also glazed some more Windsor lemon over the lemon parts of the flowers just to boost the colour. And then I was finally happy with it. I mentioned that I used my little eradicator brushes to tidy up any areas where I might have got some of the background colour on the petals. That's what I'm doing here. I got some of the background colour on the turned over part of the petal. I wait till the paper's dry and then I use the eradicator brush, slightly damp, and that removes it. It's a stiff brush, but the bristles are fairly soft so they don't damage the paper. I've put a link to these little brushes in the description for you. I hope that there was some useful information in this video. The full length version of this tutorial will be available on my Patreon site next month. Patrons have access to the line drawing, the various progress photos that I take, my reference photo and a copy of my finished painting. 
So please join us over there if you want to learn more about painting in watercolour. Thanks for watching. A like on this video is appreciated as are comments and messages. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you soon with my next tutorial. Stay safe. And I want to share with you my painting process and why I made some of the decision, decisions that I made. Yeah. And I want to share with you my painting process and why I made some of the decision, uh, decisions. Decisions. And I want to share with you my painting process and why I made some of the decisions. I cannot say that word. It's a hard word. Decisions. Decisions. And why I made some of the decisions. I painted the frangipanis on Fabriano Artistico cold pressed. Let me say that again. I painted the frangipanis on Fabriano Artistico cold pressed watercolour paper. After I did that, I decided to, after I did that, I decided to paint in all the little rolled over edges. After I did that, I decided, decided, I decided to paint in all the little rolled over edges. That might make good decisions.